Good morning, everyone. Good to see all of you here this morning and also those of you who are on Zoom and later in the day, uh, YouTube. Um, this morning, we're having John Wood as our soloist and uh, many of us have been listening to him before the service and very much looking forward to the service itself. Um, I do have to share one thing that I, I want to have us all be in, much in prayer for. Uh, David Hollinger uh, has been suffering with COVID. Uh, he's been in the hospital. He's in recovery, uh, having a very difficult time with uh, oxygen levels. Uh, if he stands up, they drop and, and all kinds of things happen. So we really need to be in prayer. Uh, this is one of the times when pastors really uh, get frustrated because the hospital will not allow us to come in unless the person is in the act of uh, passing away. Uh, so I've not been able to visit those who've been in the hospital as I, as I really desire to. So we do need to be in prayer for David. All of us, the whole church, uh, surround him and his wife, uh, Linda, with uh, our prayers and our support. Also, we got... Uh, gift certificates for divots, uh, $5, uh, one coupon per table per visit, and uh, we'll have them available. You can pick them up at any, any time. Um, we'll begin our worship service with our prelude. Hear me well. 
when I pray, everything I feel and say, O oh Lord, I call to you, lifting up my heart, lifting up my hands in a sacrifice of joy. In a sacrifice of joy. Thank you. Dear friends, let us love one another because love comes from God. And whoever loves others is a child of God. God has showed us what is good, to do justice, to love with kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Our first time is, O oh, guide me, O oh, thou great Jehovah. is with us, Christ is with us, and our Holy Spirit is with us. Let us pray. O eternal God, companion of us all who seek you, draw near to us so that we may draw near to you. Grant us the grace to love others as you love them. Enable us to serve you according to your will, and grant us the true freedom which is found only in Jesus Christ our Lord. So often when you have called us to be your voice in today's world, we have remained silent and have remained blind to the needs of those around us and to fight against the injustices all around us. We have remained content while all around us, there are people suffering from the lack of you in their lives. Forgive us, Lord. Give us the strength and courage to stand firm and declare in word and deed your love for all of those around us. In your name alone do we pray this. Amen.
since we are justified by faith alone. In that faith, we can find peace with God and forgiveness of all our sins. Through Jesus Christ alone, do we find the grace, hope, and joy that comes from sharing with others the glory of God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again and ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
I know he's watching over me. He's watching over me. Testament reading comes from the book of Numbers, beginning with the fourth verse of the 21st chapter. Then the people of Israel continued southward along the road to the Red Sea in order to go around the land of Edom. The people were very discouraged, and they began to murmur against God and complain against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die here in the wilderness, they whined. There's nothing to eat here and nothing to drink, and we hate this insipid manna. So the Lord allowed poisonous snakes to come among them in order to punish them, and many of them were bitten and died. Then the people cried out to Moses, We have sinned, for we've spoken against Jehovah and against you. We're sorry. Pray to him, take away the snakes. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord told him, Make a bronze replica of one of these snakes and attach it to a pole. Anyone who is bitten shall live if he simply looks up at the bronze snake. Moses did so. And whenever anyone had been bitten, looked at the bronze snake, he or she recovered. The psalm is number 103. Epistle reading comes from the book of Ephesus, beginning with the first verse of the second chapter. Once you were under God's curse, doomed forever for your sins. You went along with the crowd, and just like all the others, full of sin, obeying Satan, who is at work even now in the hearts of those who are against the Lord. All of us used to be just as they are. 
expressing the evil that is within us, doing everything wicked thing that our passions might lead us into. We were born with sinful natures and were under God's anger just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy. He loved us so much that even though we were spiritually dead because of our sins, he gave us new lives when he raised Christ from the dead and lifted us up from the, lifted us up from the grave into the glory of Christ, where we all will sit with him in the heavenly realms, all because of what Jesus Christ did. Now, God can point to us as examples of how very rich his benevolence is, as seen in all he has done for us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Because of his kindness, we have been saved through trusting Christ. And even that trusting is not of our own doing. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good we have done. It is solely because God himself has made us what we are, and given us new lives from Christ Jesus, our Lord. And it was long ago he had planned that he would, we should spend our lives helping others. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Number 402. be seated. The gospel reading begins with the 14th verse of the third chapter of John. Jesus said, as lifted, Moses lifted up the bronze image of a serpent on a pole, even so too must I be lifted up upon a pole, so that anyone who believes in me will have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him shall not be perish, but have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn it, but to save it. May God add his blessing to hearing his holy word this morning, and may we come to understand it yet this very day. As you probably would realize, I've preached on John 3.16 so many times, I can't think of anything due to say. If you don't believe it now, One more time, probably going to change your mind. So like I did last week, when I could not find what the Lord was leading me to until I got into the song that Bill and Gloria Gaither um, wrote, I ran across this passage that you see a part of in your bulletin this morning. The church is, and it's a monologue, a discussion in the mind of John Walden, or Jacob Walden, who is a youth pastor in a Baptist church in Texas. And that got me to thinking. Because last week, we talked about the church being this sacred space. And what about this room makes you feel closer to God? And, and what is it within the room that has meaning to you? Um, does the flame, eternal flame over the top of the arch Remind you that God is always here. Does the painting speak to you? How about what's on our pyramids, those symbols, the way the room is, the, the, the stained glass at the very tops of the windows? Are those the things that make 
God present here for you? Does that set this apart as sacred space? And is it a part of that sacred space that when you come in here, you feel different? You find things here that you don't find elsewhere. Well, Jacob wanted to talk about the other church, not the building, but the body of Christ, the people. He wanted to talk about the church that doesn't exist just in this room, but wherever each one of you goes, the church goes with you. And how you behave on Monday is much more important in that church than how you behave on Sunday. It's very, very important that we remember that we don't just put on church on Sunday. We are church all seven days of the week. And we are representing Jesus Christ every moment of those seven days. Now, Jacob writes that the church is hard. That means the church is difficult. It's not easy being church. And there's a couple of different reasons for that. First of all, if we're being church, we're not going to live like our neighbors do. What? Wait, what, 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 wait, wait, hold it. You mean I'm not going to live like every average other American? If I'm a Christian, you mean I'm going to live differently in my home than my neighbor does in their home or in my yard than they do in their yard? If being a Christian changes things, it needs to change our daily lives. So it's very important that we understand that we aren't just church when we've gathered together. We're church wherever we go. The second thing that Jacob was talking about is that one of the most difficult things we have in our daily lives is we are judged. We're judged by those neighbors. We're judged by how they think of us. We're judged as to whether they think we're doing the right thing or the not right thing. They have an opinion of you, whether you want them to or not. They think highly of you or they think lowly of you. We are all judged by the world. But we're not supposed to be judged by the church. Yet many people are very concerned that the church does judge them, especially when they come into this space. They look at how we're dressed. They look at how we talk. They look at what we talk about. We're judged. We judge each other but we're not supposed to. Jesus didn't judge us. Jesus accepted us as we are and then improved us. He didn't expect us to be up here at the beginning. He said, okay, I'll meet you here. I'll bring you up. But I'm going to meet you where you are. And that's where we, as the church, need to be when we gather as well as we are in our homes. We need to not have opinions of the other person. We're supposed to be open to them. And you know as well as I do that they're going to mess up because they're just like us. We mess up. Who here has not made a mistake in their life? <laughs> I have to put my hand down quick. Yeah, we all do. Does that make us less than anybody else? No, it makes us exactly the same as anybody else. And if we go around judging them, as well, I'm better than they are, or they're worse than I am, we're not being the church. 
Remember, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus accepted people the way they were and offered them the opportunity to become what he wanted them to be, what God wanted us all to be. I remember the first time I really understood that. It's strange, I was at a camp meeting where I don't think there was more judgmental people in the world. If you didn't dress like them, you weren't accepted. If you didn't talk like them, they didn't want you around. They had certain things that they wanted you to do and be like them. And yet it was in that meeting that I suddenly understood what Jesus was all about. That he was the exact opposite of what they were doing. That he was about embracing people, pulling them in. And that as they were loved by him, they would naturally change. Think about that. God's love would change them because they were accepted. Do you remember how our attire has changed? <laughs> remember when we used to have to wear one of these every time you went to work? <laughs> Men? <laughs> remember when if you came in here, you had to have a suit coat on? Ladies, you had to have a hat? Yeah. It's all changed, isn't it? Do you remember in those days, though, how you looked at somebody that didn't dress right? <laughs> And do you remember when on Friday you could go casual at the office? Woo! Funny, somebody figured out, let's do it every day. <laughs> let's accept ourselves as we are instead of trying to make us into one another, something else. And so Jacob is saying, one of the things the church has to learn how to do is not make people feel they are judged when they come into our presence. Now, that isn't just worship. That's when we're doing something together socially or something like in the kitchen here at the church. We can judge each other so harshly. Do it this way or get out. No. You willing to do it? Good, thank you, I'll do it. I'll let you. Do you learn? Yeah. Oh, you can do it better? Okay, I'll try that. But not stand there and go, you didn't do it right. You know, it's been interesting to see how we as a church have adapted due to the pandemic. You, you really, people, you really should come to one of the consistory meetings. You, re you really should come and observe how that has changed. A year ago, we sat next to each other, pushed the chairs all together. Now, we almost take the whole social hall. You know, there's one person per table, or two at the most. And Gordon is trying to help us get that out to the people who don't want to be in church physically but want to be at the consistory meeting on Zoom. So we have all this technology going on at the same time. It's ra rapidly different. But what I enjoy is we went with it. We changed. We found that we could do it, even if we didn't do it the way we used to do it. And that's what Jacob is saying. That's what he's pointing to. Jesus is saying, there's a better way if you want to find it. I'll lead you there. I'll show you the way. But remember, I am accepting you wherever you start. You don't have to be here. You don't have to be over there. You're here. Okay, we'll start here, and we'll go on the way. And do you think we'll fall off the way? Oh, sure. Yeah, we'll all mess up. And that's where, when we're truly brothers and sisters, we don't judge one another for falling off the way. 
we try to find ways to help you get back on the way. We try to open our arms of love and acceptance and pull each other together, not pushing away. It's been interesting to me to watch how all of you come in here on Sunday mornings, now that we have to sit differently. There's those of you who always sit in the same pew that you did before because that pew happens to be open. There's other pews that are not open any longer, so you have to find a different way to sit. And it's been interesting to see those who come in and they've found the place, but when they get here, someone else has also found that place. Hmm, now what do I do? And God bless you all. It's been interesting to find, watch you find a new spot to sit. And you're comfortable there. You've adapted. You didn't go, well, I'm not going to sit if I can't sit there. No, oh, you found a place. Because you knew there was a place for you here. In fact, there's many places for you here. I'll never forget the one Christmas Sunday morning um, because so many fewer people came that particular day, being Christmas being on Sunday. And some of you wore your pajamas like we asked you to do. And we realized that the back pew would be like the fourth pew back, not way back there in the back of the room. So it was interesting to watch people trying to figure out where they would sit in those four pews, because none of them were usually sat there. And the Krieger family had come in their jammies, Brian and Kim and the girls. And so we gave them the privilege of sitting in the back of the four pews. Now, Barbara showed up, and she went to sit with them. I said, no, Barbara, you can't sit there. You're not dressed as they are. You'll, you'll have to... <laughs> <laughs> she didn't know I was joking, and she moved. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she adapted. It's wonderful. That's what church should be, adapting to the needs of others, not demanding my way. Because it's not about our way. It's about his way. And he'll show it to you if you look for it. Amen.
Thank you, John. And where are you from, John? Gilbertsville. Gilbertsville. Good to have you with us. We be on our final results, Jim. Final results. Yeah. Yeah. Not just partial results. No. Final no. results. All righty. Good. Good to have you with us this morning, John. You added to our service so much. Of course, this morning we want to keep in memory in our prayers, David, and also all those others who are facing uh, the complications of COVID. We're so glad to see people who have been able to get their vaccines and are be able to enter back out into the world. Um, it'll come. It's just gonna take far more time than we would like it to take. So let us be in prayer for David and all those are that. Are there other prayer concerns this morning? Yes. I Okay, Lynn, uh, Eileen's sister, Kim, has, has, also has COVID and needs to be in our prayers. Gordon? Okay. All right. Hmm? Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Uh, Gordon's boss also has contracted uh, COVID. And, of course, we are in prayer for Gordon. Uh, his upcoming surgery is approaching rapidly. Not fast enough, right, Gordon? <laughs> Any others? Yes. Okay, good. Prayer Thanksgiving then. Yes, for Carol. Okay. Any others? Shall we go before God in prayer? Gracious God, we come into your presence at your call, at your invitation. We bring with us the load we carry, the burdens, that things that are difficult to manage, those hopes and dreams that seem to be just out of reach, those things that we wish we had never done. We bring them all to you. We also bring with us those prayers and concerns of people that we love and care about and all that they're dealing with and facing. 
For you've called us not to be just concerned about ourselves, but all those who are around us. We're to be your ambassador, your messengers for them, to help them hear the good news that we have heard, to find the way that you've laid out before them as well as us. And Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence to lay down all our burdens, to leave them here, to go from this place cleansed, renewed, emptied of all that would bear us down. May we walk from this pace, place along the path that you've laid out for us these coming days. May we go forth holding tightly to your hand as you lead, guide, and direct us, and help us to be all that you want us to be. Sometimes it's things that we're not all that interested in, yet we know you've placed them before us because you know you're, we're the ones who should address it. Help us not to put off on others what we should be doing ourselves. And in all things, Lord, help us to trust you each and every day. We pray for your church, the body gathered here and elsewhere around the world. Help us to be that living testament of your love, that avenue that others might find your grace as we have. All of this we pray in the name of him who taught us to pray with this song that we are about to sing. we have this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes. Yeah, come on up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's better. Um, so we'll be having a pie sale. Um, my mom will be making the pies. So we'll be having a cherry pie, coconut pie, lemon sponge, key lime, and then um, AP cakes as well. We will be baking um, Good Friday, which I believe is April 2nd. Pies will be available for pickup Saturday, April 3rd from 10 till 2 o'clock. Um, there will be a message going out on Realm uh, later today, so please keep an eye out for that. Um, especially with the short time period, we ask, um, you know, get the word out there, um, so, you know, promote to coworkers, your neighbors, um, to really get the word out there. Um, so again, a message will be sent through um, Realm, and we'll have a pie sale on April 3rd. Thank you. And the price of the pies? Oh, yeah, good, good point. Um, cherry pie will be $10, as well as the key lime pie. Coconut 
and lemon sponge will be $12 and AP cakes will be five. A hundred. If it's more than that, that'd be wonderful. But that's the goal. Yes. The Sunday before, which? Palm Sunday. Yes. Okay. The 28th. Am I missing anything? I'll take okay. one of each. No, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> The other uh, things that are coming up with Holy Week, um, we will be having a Zoom uh, Maundy Thursday service uh, so that you can watch what goes on here in the sanctuary. If you want to come, you may, but we're not really designing it around a, an audience within the sanctuary. We're designing it around for a Zoom uh, congregation and also those who would watch it on uh, YouTube. Any other announcements we need to lift up? Yes. Um, I'm just going to reiterate about the choir room. I want to thank uh, Jody Goodhart this past year who helped me clean out the room. Secondly, you and your wife who emptied the room so they could chant through the rug. And then lastly, yesterday we had Butch, Greg, Donna Hutchinson, and Butch, and um, oh, what's his name? He's from TV Power. Glenn. 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 Yes. They helped put everything back yesterday. So and, Brian. Brian. and Brian. And Brian. Right, right. To, uh, you know, the volunteers that we have here, they keep the wheel turning. Mm -hmm. We should appreciate people who yes. volunteer in this church. Yes, very much Secondly, so. Um, I'm looking for another filing cabinet, so if anybody has any in the house or a school or anywhere, I'd like another filing cabinet. Four drawer if you have it, let me know. So you have those already filled with all your music? It will be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. It will be. <laughs> yes, thank you, John. Our closing hymn this morning is Beneath the Cross of Jesus. Oh, Danny boy, the pie.
pipes, the pipes are calling from Glen to Glen and down the mountain side. The summer's gone and all the roses fall. Tis you, tis you. Must go and I must buy. But come ye back when summer's in the meadow, or when the valley's hushed and white with snow. It's I'll be. Sunshine or in shadow. Oh, Danny boy, oh, Danny boy, I love you so. But when he comes and all the flowers are dying. If I am dead, as dead I well may be, you'll come and find the place where I am lying, and kneel and sing, and I'll be there for me. And I shall hear the Soft your tread above me, and all my grave will warm a sweeter be. For you will bend and tell me that you love me, and I shall sleep in peace. Until you come to me.